Howdy, y'all. Welcome to the Beverly Hillbillies Facts and Trivia. Y'all kick off the shoes and you set a spell, all right? Now here's your host for the show, that old Kentucky boy himself, Mr. Bob Snap. Uh, guys, welcome to the Beverly Hillbillies Facts and Trivia. Thanks for being here. Uh, today's uh, video is on uh, the return of the Beverly Hillbillies movie, and it was pitiful, pitiful. Let's take a Granny had gone to her reward. She had divided up his fortune between Jethro and Ellie Mae. The two youngins invested their respective interests. Jethro was the owner and head producer of Mammoth Motion Picture Studios. Ellie owned a zoo. Mr. Drysdale had gone to the great mint in the sky, while Jane Hathaway, still Miss Jane, was now a Washington, D.C. career girl working for the government. Jed sold his mansion in Beverly Hills and moved back to the cabin where it all started, only he added on to the cabin for a little more space. This was the opening sequence of the made-for-television movie The Return of the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, which updated audiences on the lives of the Clampets in 1981. Creator Paul Henning had reassembled his, ca his cast, uh, Buddy Epson, Nancy Culp, and Donna Douglas. Max Bear, however, did not wish to return to the show that boosted him to fame. Those three characters, Jed, Ellie, and Ellie Mae, and Miss Jane, were the only three remnants of the original show. The return lost more than the characters. It lost the original humor that made the show so popular. And he did, however, write the show while Bob Leeds, an occasional director of the original show, directed. Leeds was then in the process of getting a divorce from Donna Douglas. Actor Shad Heller and Shug Fisher, who appeared in several episodes in the late 60s, also had roles in the two hour movie. Earl Scruggs flew in from Tennessee to contribute some guitar picking, but his old bluegrass partner of many years, Lester Flatt, had died in 79. Factors contributing to the production's failure were many. For Donna Douglas, it was the movie's slack of nostalgia. If you think about it, she said, it had none of the original premises. No roots, the house was gone, the car was gone, no bank, Drysdale was not there, and the only cast members from the original were me, Buddy, and Nancy. The anchors were just not there. There was reasons other than nostalgia in collecting the actors again for this TV movie. <clears throat> As Henning explains, the main one was financial. Unfortunately, the movie did not prove lucrative. Rebuilding the original sets would have been costly, so Henning wrote the movie around Jed's cabin back in the hills. It was purely a business enterprise. Purely a chance to make some money, Henning said. A fellow by the name of Ron Beckman, who had been in charge of contracts at the old studio, came to see me and said we thought uh, we could reap a financial harvest by having the hillbillies get together again. <clears throat> we also come to the possibility of making money, keeping money, uh, capital gains, as it were. Money was the incentive. But Henning was not in the best of health at the time. I had started taking blood pressure depressant to hold my blood pressure down, which was dangerously high, he explains. I didn't want to have a stroke. I took four of these pills a day, and it did indeed lower the blood pressure, but it also lowered my awareness. I call it pharmaceutical lobotomy. Uh, the complica to complicate matters, just when Henning sat down with the cast and the read-throughs proved the script was not up to the old hillbilly standards, a writer's guild strike was called. They could not alter the script by any means. Henning did not have the time to rewrite the whole script, so the story remained much the same. The disappointment of those involved, especially Henning, one of the television's most talented comedy, act uh, comedy writers. I take full responsibility for the failure of the return of the Beverly Hillbilly, said the creator. It was a bad script. I knew it. You know, I knew it was a bad script. And when it came time to rewrite it, the writer's guild went on strike, and I was helpless between a rock and a hard place, as a hillbilly would say. <clears throat> oh, there was lots more reasons besides the script. The script was terrible, but uh, I mean, there was no Max Bear Jr. Uh, Emma Jean Coca playing Granny's Maul is just stupid. Uh, and Granny was kind of like the anchor, in my personal opinion, or the anchor for the show. And without her, without Irene Ryan there, there was no purpose. Uh, it wasn't even, I mean, like Dandy Griffith show uh, did one, Return of May Bayberry, and it was Writing wasn't that good, but it was cool seeing them all get back together, you know, and it was, it was nostalgic and all that. But this one didn't even do that. I guess maybe because there was only three original members in there. Anyway, that's all I have for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please don't forget about classic TV facts and trivia. Um, it's on MASH, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, yes, it's on MASH. It's on Jamie Farr. 
uh, and classic rock and country music facts and trivia. It's about uh, songs that were written about someone's their bandmate, the person who wrote the song. They wrote it about their bandmate. It's pretty interesting. Go and check that out. Um, please subscribe. Please like this video. You guys have a great day. God bless. I'm praying for you.